All right, so Trick or Trauma here, and I decided today I kind of take you through a little bit some of the needles that are out here um, that people use, uh, not just in TRT, but other situations as well. So this would be a tuberculin needle, and a lot of times when you hear people who are on the comment sections of the videos and they're talking about uh, microdosing, what they're using is these tuberculin needles here. Um, those tuberculin needles, uh, legitimately, you're probably not going to feel much by injecting them. You're not really going to get a deep IM push of the med using that tuberculin needle. But as you can see, they are very small. Uh, you can see it in comparison to the dime. You know, it's, it's a very small needle. Uh, the problem is drawing the fluid out of the vial and and into the syringe with a tuberculin needle. If you're using a testosterone sipinate, it's very viscous. It's, it's a very thick fluid. So pulling that um, fluid out of the vial into the syringe with a 24 gauge needle wouldn't be the easiest thing. Um, you graduate from a 24 gauge here up to, or a tuberculin here to a 24 gauge needle here. Generally 24 is what my physician uh, sends me the script for in order to administer the testosterone sipinate. If you go back over here to the green needle here, um, then this is what I use to draw the fluid out of the uh, vial. And then I administer it with the yellow 24 gauge here. Every once in a while, the 24 gauges will be out of stock and I don't mind administering it with the 22 gauge needle here. Um, I really don't see a huge bit of difference between a 24 and a 22 when it comes to administration. Really not all that big of a difference. Um, but again, if you look at, you know, a 22 gauge needle versus a tuberculin needle, there's a, there's a bit of a size difference there. So the people who are talking about microdosing, you know, that's a, that's a bit of a size difference here. You graduate up from a 22 gauge needle to the pink 20 gauge needle here. Um, generally, and the reason I have all these needles, these aren't needles for the purposes of drawing and, and administering meds with the exception of the tuberculin syringe um, over here. But these are all needles for giving IVs, okay? And um, most of the time, if you're gonna give an IV, you, if you're gonna start it in hand, you're gonna go with a 24, a 22, or a 20 gauge needle. Those are all gonna go in someone's hand to start an IV. Once you get from the wrist to the to the elbow, which you call it antecubital, um, you know, anywhere in the forearm and the elbow, you're, I, I shy away from 22s. I go to 18s because what you're saying when you go into the arm is that, you know, there's a greater need for a po potential of fluid volume. So, <clears throat> and it would stand to reason that the larger diameter catheter you put into the arm, the more fluid that you can run through it. So, but as you can see, there's a whopping difference here between an 18 and a tuberculin. Like <laughs> you could push so much more fluid through an 18 than you ever could through a tuberculin, right? Um, again, 18, the green, is what I would use to draw. I use an equivalent, I don't use this type of needle, but I use that to draw the meds out of the vials. And then I administer them with the yellow 24 gauge, okay? So way easier to draw testosterone up with a larger needle, switch out the needles to a smaller needle and administer it with smaller, okay? Um, now when you're getting into trauma settings, here you got your 18. Your 18 would be like the threshold of a trauma needle. That would be, you know, you're pushing a, you're pushing a fair amount of fluid, but not a lot of fluid. When you get into the trauma settings, you get into this gray 16 gauge needle. Now you're saying, you know, my patient needs fluid. Absolutely. And you're, you're going to this gray 16 gauge needle. That would be definitely a forearm kind of in a cubital area needle. Um, that is the second largest needle that most uh, pre-hospital providers carry. You get into this uh, 14 gauge needle, which this 14 gauge needle specifically, we have 14 gauges that are designed for IV purposes. I didn't have one going out of date and expiring for that. So, uh, you know, but this would be a 14 gauge that is actually designed to be stuck in the chest for somebody who maybe has a sucking chest wound, a gunshot wound. And this would go in there and, and relieve all the air out of the chest to let that air escape. Um, there's actually a new version of that that 
uh, I got a, an opportunity to try out and, and get some hands-on work with and that's this big boy right here um, this is a 14 gauge needle same as this it's a little bit longer and if you were shot in the chest you had a you know suck a gun shot wound you had a spontaneous spontaneous pneumothorax that turned into a tension pneumothorax that was pushing all your organs on one side of your body you would get a needle like this shoved into your chest in order to relieve the air out of your chest and and these new versions of uh 14 gauge needles come with a one-way valve on them so air doesn't leak back into the chest as you can see it's it's got greater length in it so that you know you can deal with people who are heavier people um really really great product to be honest with you it's from uh, north american rescue they do a fantastic job of making chest decompression needles but you know for people who are worried about chest needles sorry about the finger stuff so if you guys are people who are worried about chest needles and and you guys are worried about you know the size of the needles that you you know use for for drawing up and administering uh testosterone you can see that when your doctor is giving you this yellow 24 over here there's a whole slew bigger that they could go with that you know that's actually a fairly modest needle to administer with um and again, I can't imagine a doctor prescribing you to use a tuberculin needle unless you're microdosing. So that's kind of a rundown on what the different sizes of needles look like in comparison to each other. Um, if you guys are microdosing, uh, let me know what you're doing. I, I, again, you know, it's a it's something I'm interested in. I plan on talking to a physician about it when I go back and see him in October and kind of see what the regiment looks like. And I'd love to be educated enough to say, hey, you know, there's some people who are having success at these kind of doses. So if you're microdosing, let me know what your regime is. I'd love to be able to, you know, have that discussion. But that's kind of a lowdown on what, what the different variety of needles look like size comparison and and you know what's out there in the marketplace anyways i'm trick or trauma you guys have a great day